Topic 6.7, Part 1, Mutation. Here are some of the questions that we'll be addressing. What is a mutation? What's a point mutation? Distinguish between silent mutations, nonsense mutations, and missense mutations. Mutations can be positive, negative, or neutral. Explain. I'm Mr. W from learn-biology.com where we believe that if you're really going to learn AP Bio, you've got to interact and get feedback. That's what happens on learn-biology.com. We're so sure of that, that your subscription comes with a money back guarantee. What is a mutation? What's a point mutation? A mutation is a random change in DNA or an entire chromosome. A point mutation is a change in a single nucleotide. You see that here with the nucleotide C mutating to the nucleotide T. Distinguish between silent mutations, nonsense mutations, and missense mutations. Silent mutations are mutations that result in the same amino acid being coded for. The DNA changes, but the amino acid in the protein doesn't. Why? Because the genetic code is redundant with many codons coding for the same amino acid. A nonsense mutation is a mutation that inserts a stop codon instead of an amino acid. And a missense mutation changes the amino acid from one to another. We see a silent mutation over here. The original DNA is lysine. The DNA that's now being coded for despite this mutation is lysine. Here's a nonsense mutation where instead of lysine, we have a stop codon. And here we have missense mutations. One is coding for arginine instead of lysine, and one is coding for threonine. The effect of a missense mutation depends on the chemistry of the substitution. This isn't a term that you need to know, but a conservative missense mutation is one where the chemistry is of less significance. So lysine is a basic amino acid. It has this amino group over here at the end, and so does arginine. So that might not change the structure of the protein very much. It might not change it in a functional way that is really observable in a phenotype. It's not clear, but it might not be a big deal. On the other hand, substituting threonine, which is a nonpolar amino acid, for lysine would be a big deal. This is nonpolar. This is basic. That's a very significant change in chemistry, and that will impact the function of the protein. What are frame shift mutations? To review this concept, I've put together a sentence composed of three letter words. There are no spaces, but we have these little dividers here. If we were to do a mutation where we did a substitution of E for A over here, then note that most of the words still make sense. We have the cat. What's a cat? Well, you could probably surmise that that was intended to be cat and that it's just a typo. But if we deleted one of the letters, like hitting the delete key on your keyboard, then what we get is if we drop this A over here, then essentially we've significantly changed the meaning. We have one word that makes sense insofar as it's a word, but it doesn't make sense in the context over here. That is called a frame shift mutation because codons are read in groups of three. If you delete or insert, you change the reading frame. Now let's look at some nucleotides. Here is a series of codons that code for four amino acids and then a stop codon. And note that this example shows RNA to show the consequences. The mutation would have been in the DNA. If we have a frame shift mutation, then what we've done is we've done a deletion or an insertion that changes the reading frame just like we did over here. And that will cause extensive missense or nonsense. Deleting this U over here causes these two amino acids to be wrong. That's missense. Or what can happen is you can have the insertion of a stop codon and then the entire protein doesn't get coded for after this first amino acid. That is the impact of a frame shift mutation. Sickle cell disease is caused by a single substitution mutation. Explain how one such substitution can cause sickle cell disease. 
Sickle cell disease is one of the first genetic diseases that was understood well on a molecular level. It's important to know about. The disease involves changes in the protein hemoglobin. Hemoglobin, shown over here, is a quaternary protein that carries oxygen in red blood cells. So here's hemoglobin in red blood cells, and here the red blood cells are carrying oxygen, delivering it to the tissues of the body. The mutation that causes sickle cell disease is a missense mutation, and the eighth DNA triplet mutates from GAG to CTC, and that causes valine, which is nonpolar, to substitute for glutamic acid. That causes a significant change in the chemistry of hemoglobin. It causes hemoglobin molecules to stick together. So notice how over here, they're separate within the red blood cell, but the mutated form, they'll form very weak bonds. And that happens under low oxygen conditions. That just means when you exercise or walk up a flight of stairs, anything like that, that causes the cells to become sickled or spiked, and they get stuck in red blood cells, and that causes extensive tissue damage. This is a recessive mutation. You need to be homozygous in order to express the phenotype. That there is a phenotype that is caused by being a heterozygote. That's called sickle cell trait. In any case, this is how a single substitution mutation can be responsible for a significant genetic disease. Mutations can be positive, negative, or neutral. Explain. The big idea is that a mutation's effect always depends on the environment. It's contextual. A positive mutation improves the phenotype in a way that increases evolutionary fitness. Fitness is about survival and reproduction. If it increases both of those things, then it's a positive mutation. Here's an example. This is a kind of fish that's called a three-spined stickleback. There are populations that live in oceans. There are populations that live in freshwater. Note this pelvic spine over here. It's an adaptation that promotes survival in marine environments because it protects against certain kinds of predators. There are populations of sticklebacks that became stranded in freshwater lakes. In those populations, the predators were absent. There was a mutation that emerged that resulted in the loss of that pelvic spine not only because it doesn't make sense to produce a structure that has no survival benefit, but there are predators that actually can prey on sticklebacks with the pelvic spine. So losing the pelvic spine, positive mutation. We just talked about sickle cell anemia. That's, uh, in most cases, a mutation that reduces fitness. Why? Because it causes diseased red blood cells and it causes tissue damage, as we just explained. However, in the context in which the mutation for sickle cell anemia evolved, in some ways it's a positive mutation. Why? Because having one dose of the sickle cell allele, in other words, being a heterozygote, gives you resistance to malaria. So that makes it a positive mutation in a malaria ridden area. In that context, it's positive. A neutral mutation has no effect on the phenotype, and that's because it might happen in non-coding or non-regulatory DNA, or it might result in a silent mutation where the amino acid doesn't change. Are you asking yourself, how am I going to get a 4 or a 5 on the AP Bio exam? It's a good question because it's a hard test, but we have a plan for your success. Go to learn-biology.com, sign up for a free trial, and complete our interactive tutorials and interactive AP Bio exam reviews. We guarantee you a 4 or a 5 on the AP Bio exam. See you on learn-biology.com. How are mutations important to evolution? Mutations provide the raw material upon which natural selection acts. Note that I'm using the same illustration as in the previous slide, and I'm doing that on purpose. Mutation makes evolution a creative process that results in adaptation. Without mutation, natural selection could only cull 
harmful variants from a population. But with mutation, new variants can arise that increase a population's fitness. What's the difference between germline and somatic mutations? Germline mutations are mutations in the cells that make gametes and all other cells. Here's sperm, here's an egg. If there were a mutation in either one, then that mutation would be present in every cell in the embryo. That means it would be present in every cell in the organism and it would be present in the gametes that that organism produced. Germline mutations can be inherited. They're subject to natural selection. And what's an example? Any inherited genetic disease, such as sickle cell anemia, which we have discussed, or every adaptation. A somatic mutation, it emerges in some tissue during the course of development or during the course of adult life. It only affects the organism. It's not passed on to the future. And an example are the somatic mutations that can cause cancer. Want to learn more? Sign up for a free trial of the website that guarantees your AP Biology success, learn-biology.com, and watch this next video.